Hi and welcome to the We Are Zion Sermon Podcast. We are a local church based here in Chennai, India. We are so glad you are with us and hope that this will encourage, inspire and instill fresh faith in you. We conclude our sermon series today called All the Fields where we explored the deep emotions that are common to every one of us. We desire to allow the Holy Spirit to shape our emotions so that they don't drive our lives. We look at the emotion of insecurity today, one that all of us without exception are familiar with. We pray that as you listen to the word that you will identify areas of insecurity in your life and hand them over to Jesus who alone can bring us the peace and security that we desperately look for. Hi church, it's such a joy and I'm honored to be bringing God's word to you. Uh as you all might be aware that we've been going through this series called All the Fields. We've come today to part 6 of that series and uh we've started it and i believe uh, a lot of us probably are in this pathway where we are hearing god speak and probably the holy spirit is prompting a particular area in our life a particular feeling which we've allowed it to govern and we've probably dictated certain decisions and certain habits around that and i believe god wants us to uh be intentional about it that we just don't give it a passing and just allow it to uh be there and become part of us but we deal with it the god way and we see in the light that we can't do this journey alone that we need the holy spirit more than ever before in this entire series we started off by seeing with the first as anger then we saw sadness and disgust and then uh we saw after that anxiety and worry last week we saw what it is to have fear and today we are going to be touching on this topic called insecurity and uh, if there's one thing all of us can agree on is that insecurity is felt by everyone towards someone and i believe um you know we all have our insecure moments we all carry those insecurities within us Uh, for some of us it started early on and then we just piled one thing over the other and so today we have custom built our own insecurities for ourselves but even as we dwell into god's word you know one thing is uh, god doesn't want to shame us when we read his word but he wants to show us that this is not something that he created us he wants us to set us free and he wants us to live a life where uh, we won't have this feeling and be governed by this feeling So even as we uh dive deep into God's word I'm going to ask uh, if we can just take a minute just to say a quick word of prayer so that God will help us govern our thoughts and narrow it down so that we'll be able to see what his word has to say loving heavenly father lord we thank you lord for this time lord i pray even as i bring your word lord jesus that you would anoint me i pray the words that come out of my mouth be your words i pray as it, as we meditate on it lord jesus may it fall on good soil May our hearts be open to receiving it, Lord. Be with us and bless us. In your most holy name, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, this meaning of insecurity, which the dictionary defines, is lacking confidence, doubting our own abilities. Uh, it also goes on to say, not confident about yourself or your relationships with other people. And today, if I have to ask you, who all will feel insecurity? I think it will be everyone. everyone on the face of this earth will be insecure about something or the other today your insecurity could be between yourself and your friend today it could be between you and your spouse or your extended family or it could be towards you and your sibling or it could be towards you and your coworker or your subordinate or it could be towards you and your boss or it could be towards you and the person who's sitting next to you at church today or for those of you who are driving could be someone who you thought was close and suddenly they exhibited something which you know which made you insecure so i would like to go back to the first passage that we took when we started the series colossians chapter 3 verse 5 and read that small bit and it goes on to say uh that's a life shaped by things and feelings instead of by god and uh if you notice paul's writing to the colossian church and he says that we need to kill off everything that is connected to this and he says this life that we're living cannot be shaped by the things that we have around us by the things that we own by the things that we are amongst uh you know uh, around a particular place can't we can't be governed by that 
and we can't be governed by feelings. And so as we started the series, each of these feelings that we've seen uh, are intertwined. You know, we feel something, we suddenly, um, you know, can see there's a bit of sadness in that. And suddenly we can see anger coming out of that. And we can see suddenly a form of disgust. And so they're all intertwined. But as we look deeper into insecurity, why is it a feeling that we all carry? For some of us, we've grown with it. I personally can remember when I was growing up, there was one insecurity over another. And so, you know, uh, I piled up one on top of the other. And before I knew it, I had a set of friends who fell into this category who would agree with my insecurity. And we suddenly see we are shaping people around us based on our insecurities because they give us comfortable feelings because they are the ones who I think understand because they are the ones who I think will help me uh, be a better person. When we look into the word of God, when we look into who God created us to be, we can see that there was no trace of insecurity. And I believe that's because we are worshipping a God who is secure. We are worshipping a God who is secure. And so when we are created in his image, we can, should not feel insecure. But that's the fallen nature of man today. When man sinned, these emotions came. And you can see in that garden when God started walking that evening. So many emotions that who he created, Adam and Eve, to not have those emotions suddenly were exhibiting that. They felt shame. They felt guilt. And so today, what is this insecurity that is so big? It's not talked about. It's heavily felt and yet we are governing our lives by. And I believe the root cause for that entirely is because of the problem of comparison. If we have to see why we feel insecure, there's always this base metrics. There's always this reference point. Because I don't have that, I think I'm like this. Because I'm like this and not like that person, I think I'm not liked. Because I you know, can't wear things like them and I wear things like this. I think this is why I have these kind of friends. We suddenly go take it down even into our jobs. We suddenly take it down into our relationships. We suddenly feel insecure around the person we've married. We suddenly feel like, you know what, uh, if they are doing well, oh, does it make me less of a person? And insecurity sets in. So today, as we dive deeper, feeling insecure is a human trait. In this fallen world, it's normal. But living with insecurities will not allow us to fulfill the plans and purposes God has for us. And I want to take our attention to a passage uh, which all of us have read quite a lot of times. We itself have spoken about it when it comes to identity. And it's Psalm 139 verses 13 to 16. And this is what it says. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that fully well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them can be. The God who created us, created us unique. Um, today, I don't have to tell you how unique each and every one of us are. For those of us who are uh, married and who are living with our spouse can agree that, you know, um, there is a lot of differences that, yeah, probably marriage brings us together, but it's in that marriage we learn to live with, uh, with the uniqueness of each other. And our kids grow up and they are individually unique. Uh, our parents are unique. Our friends are unique. The people around us are unique. Every tribe, every nation, every people group are unique. Yes, they might have a few denominator things in terms of language, food, um, you know, skin color and all that. But it, but even within that, everyone is so unique. No two fingerprints are the same. Everyone is so unique. The hair, uh, the way we look, the way we talk, the way we conduct ourselves, the way we express ourselves. And that is a manifestation of God's creation. As we did, we are all beautifully and wonderfully made. Today, the insecurity that I feel because of someone, I need to realize that they also have been fearfully and wonderfully made. 
that they were not made uh, out of a place of to make me feel insecure no they were uniquely made god created each and every one here on this earth to be us the unique us but it's this spirit of comparison that brings in insecurity and messes everything up and so today how can we be sure that we are not comparing why should we compare because god never compared us when he created us and that's one important thing which we'll have to hold on to and constantly be telling ourselves humans we compare and we create god never compared and didn't create out of a place of comparison he didn't he didn't he, there was no one else to compete with him there was there was not another geshum that he was making a version 2.0 today god does not want us to be a better version he wants us he wants us to be the best possible person who he has created us to be and so today this uniqueness that we all carry we need to find that out and overcome all these feelings that we have that is taking us away and f- go back to that place and say god you created me like this give me the courage the strength the 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 security in my identity with you you know isaiah 64 verse 8 goes on to say yet you lord are our father we are the clay you are the potter we are all the work of your hand we are all the work of your hand today we need to come to this place if we are going to go down this road god i know that you created me uniquely and i know that you are my potter i would trust myself back into the potter's hands there are a lot of things that we grow up holding on to in terms of our insecurities and i pray today that as we finish this sermon that god will release us from those different clutches that we are holding on to these are all clutches which god didn't put as part of our characters no it's something we've just taken here and there it's as seasons as things got tough as things made uh, made us see things we kind of like lost our purpose and we started you know putting ourselves into a shell and so today can we take the step of telling ourselves i'm not going to compare i would rather go back to the pot i would go back to the word of god and say god can you please tell me why you've created me like this Why have you placed me in a family like this? Why have you placed me in a neighborhood like this? Why have you placed me in this city even when I don't want to be here? Why have you placed me here? I feel like I'm in a group of people where I don't even have the skill set, but why have you kept me here? There's no accident in God's plan for you. In fact, when we look into God's word and when you move past the season, you will suddenly realize that everything is falling into God's plan. and god's doing something so today for all those of you who are listening i want to encourage you can we go back to our potter who is god above as the verse says you are our lord our god and say god you are the potter i am the clay you get to mold me and you've molded me yes i have cracks i have dents i have all that but i want you to shape me lord i want you to shape me Let's not go to the potter's ear and say shape me like this shape me like that or oh, this is not what because today we are living in a time and age when we are governed by feelings so today i want to encourage you as god's children if there's one thing we can take a stand is we will take a stand that we will not compare ourselves because if we compare the word of god is going to clearly tell you that even they are created uniquely so you better figure it out deal with this feeling i love god to work in and through you and the holy spirit does this beautifully you know the beautiful thing about insecurity is we magnify it's like a magnifying glass we take it to that one character of that person and that alone stands out and we think that's the person entirely god wants us to remove that magnifying glass He wants us to say hey as much as i'm working in you i'm also working in them allow me to do the work you don't have to be doing everything and so today as we dive into god's scripture there are three things which i want to highlight three things which i believe insecurity does to us and if we can identify these three things 
I believe God will work in and through us. The Holy Spirit will start mending those wounds. And in due time, we'll be able to bring healing and live life to the fullest that he's called us to live. Because we can't live and do his work out of a place of insecurity. And even as we start, I just want to make it clear, you know, like this feeling that if we don't settle it and if we don't deal with it and if we don't look at it head on, we will build things with the foundation of insecurity. First thing that we'll go ahead and start is the first thing insecurity does is insecurity scars. It scars me for my God created identity. Um, you know, for a lot of us, um, sometimes insecurity does this thing where, okay, you know, there's a new person who's come onto my team. They are doing really well. Okay. You know what? I need to up my game and it pushes me to go and, you know, do something better in terms of probably do a couple of more extra courses or, you know, hone up another skill so that I'm able to, um, do much better in a competitive sense. But many a times, I would say even 95 to 98% of times, insecurity kind of like when we compare ourselves, when someone comes into that threat zone for us, we take a step back and we feel life has given us a hard blow. And that becomes tough. And it leaves a scar. And I believe all of us are carrying scars from us time and again from different instances in life. And honestly, it starts with the small scars that come along. And it keeps growing time and again. It goes from instance to instance. So even in your career, you would have realized if you didn't deal with insecurity in the beginning, it'll, as you climb up the ladder, you grow up with insecurity. And then you start dealing people out of a place of insecurity. And as I was meditating, I was been meditating in First Samuel. And I realized this entire journey of King Saul was one of insecurity. And we're just going to go through his life and see how we should not be. And for if the and if God prompts us in areas, may we commit it to God and say, God, work in us. Because the minute we come to God and say, God, I need help, He's willing to help us. So the first thing is from First Samuel 18, verses 5 to 9, goes on to say, Whatever Saul asked David to do, David did it successfully. So Saul made him a commander over the men of war, an appointment. That was welcomed by the people and Saul's officers alike. When the victorious Israelite army was returning home from David had killed the Philistine, women from all the towns of Israel came out to meet King Saul. They sang and danced for joy with tambourines and cymbals. This was their song. Saul has killed his thousands and David his ten thousands. This made Saul very angry. What's this, he said. They credit David with tens thousands and me with only thousands. Next, they'll be making him their king. So from that time on, Saul kept a jealous eye on David. So when we read through Saul, um, Saul was installed as king uh, because the people asked uh, for a king. And the prelude to that was, uh, it was the age of uh, the prophet Samuel. And they found inconsistencies in his son and the way his son was dealing. And when they took it to him uh, and they asked, we need a king because the neighboring lands have kings. We also need a king. Um, one, it was a blow for God because God wanted to be their king, but they didn't want God to be their king. They wanted someone physical there who had a palace, who, you know, who they could see. And honestly, Samuel gave this entire thing of what the king would demand, what the king would do, what the king will expect of his people. And they said they were okay with it. And so Saul gets anointed. And as he gets anointed, as he has become king, we see that um, position brings insecurity to him. The position that he takes up, the office that he takes up brings insecurity. And over time, he forgets that there's a God above. It all started way back, a couple of chapters back when he was supposed to kill the Amalekite king and everything that the Amalekites had, including the animals and the, uh, the livestock, every bit of it and burn everything. But he chose to pardon the king and keep him in custody. He chose to choose some of the animals. In fact, if you read the passage, it looks like they had kept it aside. And then they told Samuel that we kept it for offering it to God. So Saul was in that place where he, he knew that, you know, he had disobeyed God. And Samuel had given this instruction that God is choosing another king. 
And in that sense, um, the whole story of David and Goliath happens. And as he's coming back, all it took for Saul to feel insecure were what the women who were coming around in celebration, they were singing. And so he realized his position of him being king is in jeopardy. And that insecurity sets in. And the remainder of Saul's life, if you see, is only filled of him trying to safeguard his position. So today, I want us to come to a place of asking God, God, what is it that I'm holding on to so dearly that I've allowed insecurity to fester, to build? In fact, it's, it's become the foundation of my position that I'm holding. Today, whatever position that we hold, if it's causing a lot of insecurity, be clear that, you know what, that's not the purpose that was given, that position was given. It was given for something else. It's given for you to accomplish something and do something far bigger. So today when insecurity scars us, what does that look like? You know, we might put ourselves together and, you know, we can present ourselves as a person who does not have insecurity, but it's a feeling which is inside. And the word of God time and again reminds us that God does not look at the appearance. We can, you know, do everything in the outside to look picture perfect. But if you are operating out of a place of insecurity, it will show in the years to come. What we want to achieve and strive and prove will all be stemming out of a place of insecurity. Rather, if we draw back to God and ask God to deal with us, he will work in and through us where it comes from a place of security. So that the fruits that come out will be the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of insecurity will always be one of control, will be one of shaming and comparing, will be one of, you know, lifting one up and, you know, pulling another person down, will be treating with harshness and unkind words. And honestly, the spirit of insecurity and because of the scarring that's happened, we automatically will scar others also. We'll realize, you know what, let me put them in their place and we'll scar them. And eventually they end up having insecurity. Matthew chapter 6 verse 19 to 21 reads this. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. To combat insecurity, the scarring that has happened, we need to find out where our treasure is. Where our treasure is. Because many a times, the treasure that we are seeking for, the treasure that we are longing for, the treasure that we have, the cut the place that we think is our treasured position is probably not something I really need to give that much importance to. It's God who gives it, God who takes it, God who sits people on the throne, it God who removes people on the throne. God who allows for us to get a raise in our salaries, it's also God who does not allow it to happen. And so today, what? where is our treasure? If our treasure is in our job, we will work our way through to make sure that's secure. If our treasure is around our family, we will work in a way that, you know, we will want to control every step and every angle of our family. If we are, you know, in uh, our treasure is in our finances, we will make sure that, you know, we are striving for that. But God here wants us to realize that our treasure is not here on this earth. Everything here on this earth is so temporary. It's there for a season, it will go. So if you have to deal with this scarring, our perspective of where our treasure is has to change. Our perspective of where uh, our end goal is has to change. Because today, if the word of God says where our treasure is, why would we build treasures where moth and rust and other things will consume it? Let's do things that will be life-changing and will change generations. So today, I would ask you, can we move from this place of just being scarred and building our 
platforms on that to a place of actually allowing God to work in and through us so that he'll use us in those positions wherever he's placed us. The position of being a housewife, of being a son, of being a daughter, of being an employer, a boss, of being an entrepreneur, whatever the position is, may we never operate from a place of, you know, being scarred and scarring others with insecurity. But may we come to a place of realizing, God, you've given this for a season. Help me to be a blessing. Help me to steward it right. So that when I hand this over to the next person, they'll be able to do far more so that they'll be able to see many things happen. So today, whatever the scarring that you've received from people, from family, from people you've cared about and has left insecurity in your hearts, I would ask God, God, can you come down and heal those insecurities? You know, and it takes us to constantly talk to God about it. You can only talk to him. You can't talk to others because the scare is others might use it against you. Take it to God. Say, God, I want you to deal with my insecurities so that I'll be a better version of who you have created me to be so that I'll be that unique person. And as I read here, the treasures that God, it says, you don't store up. We are never meant to store things here on this earth. We are meant to use things here on this earth. So if insecurity has scarred you and you've just been storing a lot of things, probably you've stored up whatever God's given in your heart, whatever God's laid on your heart. I would say use it today in this world. You store it here, it's just going to die with you. If you keep using it, it'll move to a place of being a blessing to many others. Do not store it. Use it. Let not insecurity will cause you to store and you know uh, put a lid over it. But your security in Christ, the identity that He has given you, will cause you to use it, so that you know that will be a blessing to people who God brings in your life. The second thing is insecurity shrinks. What does it shrink? It shrinks God's plan for my life. It shrinks the plan, the the journey ahead. It squeezes, you know, it squeezes us to a place where we think, God, uh, I, I think I'm only this much. Whereas God's saying, I will take you to wider spaces. We are saying, no, because of my insecurity, I think it's only this much. And I believe God wants us to move us to a place where we will be able to see his plan in and through our life. You know, God wants us to prosper. He wants us to prosper in understanding him and knowing him and also in the revelation that we get from his word and when it starts working in and through us. And the beautiful thing is when we see that happen, we also understand that in this life, hardships are there. In this life, there are struggles, but that doesn't have to shape me. But when I allow insecurity to, you know, be a scarring in my life and automatically that affects my thinking. And then that shrinks the will and plan of God. And suddenly these hardships, you know, kind of like are squeezing the life out of us. We constantly need to work to make sure that we do not allow our insecurities shrink God's plan over our life. Let's continue from 1 Samuel chapter 18, verses 10 to 14. The very next day, a tormenting spirit from God overwhelmed Saul and he began to rave in his house like a madman. David was playing the harp as he did each day, but Saul had a spear in his hand and he suddenly hurled it at David, intending to pin him to the wall. But David escaped him twice. Saul was then afraid of David, for the Lord was with David and had turned away from Saul. Finally, Saul sent him away and appointed him commander of over a thousand men. And David faithfully led his troops into battle. David continued to succeed in everything he did, for the Lord was with him. When Saul recognized this, he became even more afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he was so successful at leading his troops into battle. We can see here that because of the insecurities, you know, coming into Saul and he was scared for his position, he started shrinking the plan that God had laid out for him as to be king. He started micromanaging. 
he instead of you know having a worthy commander in his army he started looking at him with jealousy and you know it eventually wanted to pin him down and kill him and today we all can be in that same place the very people we are called to lead because of our insecurity would end up doing something else rather than fulfilling what god's desired the very families we are called to build as spouses as husbands as wives we might become the people the very uh, fullness of the plan that god has will not be able to complete because of certain insecurities in us probably the very life that i'm called to live and the plan that i'm called to live in its fullest which god has laid out for me i'm not able to live because i'm carrying this heavy load of insecurity with me so today what is it that is shrinking so today is insecurity shrinking god's plan over your life for samuel uh, verse 28 reads when samuel realized that the lord was with david and how much his daughter michael loved him Saul became even more afraid of him and he remained David's enemy for the rest of his life. It says he remained. David didn't become the enemy, he remained. And often times as you read through Saul's life you'll realize that a lot of this insecurity is within his mind. It has not in his exhibition outside it, it wasn't seen. And so today are you in a position where you feel your God's plan for your life is shrinking. Is have we built altars around it that you know if anything moves around we feel insecure. We feel like you know what I everything is working out bad for me and I believe I think God's not there in it. God is there in it but he will want you to come to a place of seeing the fullness of his plan for you. Insecurity will not only shrink our plan but it will also shrink whatever we are called to do you know you will realize that some people have not moved on in time when you're talking with them every time you talk they'll say you know what back in the day back in the day they feel secure because back in the day they felt they were secure and then as time progressed insecurity probably shrunk the plan and the will and the way they saw life you'll see certain people that they'll be only secure and be themselves around people who do not have what they have and that stems from a place of insecurity because many a times we feel you know what they are little lesser than us because they don't have this in their life but i have it or they don't they don't have this going in their life but for me this is going but the beautiful thing about god's kingdom and the church that he's called us to be is that we're going to have people from every area and every sphere of life and everyone is called to live out the god given plan that's given to them specifically as much as unique we are we have a unique plan that god's called us to live out and if we are living a shrinked down version of god's plan we will view everyone else in that you know i'm reminded of a personal story uh, which happened way back uh, probably 20 years back uh, when i was a musician and uh, you know so there was Uh, I was part of a team and I was playing, and the person who was before me um, was probably the sole person who was only playing. And uh, when I started coming in and started playing, it came to a place where I was only coming when he didn't come, you know. And so that that happened like five minutes before uh, the service would start. But as time grew on, as I started playing, I realized, you know what, this place that I'm playing and the position that i'm currently holding and playing is not meant for just me and eventually what happened was uh, that 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 space automatically seemed like a very small space and i believe it was i think god moving me to a place saying allow more people you know and suddenly god brought in a, another musician friend and you know we added him and then we added another person and eventually i could move out over the next couple of years later For, because that position did, didn't define me it didn't give me my identity yes it was a place where i got to serve but that didn't govern me and eventually what happened is because that was the culture that was set then many others who came later were able to make room for others 
So today, when you live out a, your the plan of God over your life, which is shrunk down because of insecurity, you will make sure that only you're standing in that. You will make sure that there's no room for others. Insecurity does not allow room for others. Rather, it creates space for only one person. Overcoming insecurity is seen as moving from exclusivity to inclusivity. And so today, I want us as a church, as individuals, as people are listening today, can we make this? Lord, I don't want to live a life that is shrunk. I want to live life to its fullest, which does not have insecurity in it. Come to a place. You know, when you look at Saul, he could have been the best king ever. Yes, he did a mistake. He knew God was taking the whole, uh, you know, throne from him, but he could have ended it well. He didn't end it well, in fact. He allowed insecurity to grip him. And then if you see, like, a, it literally says he became a madman because he started pursuing David. He wanted to kill David. He thought by killing him, he could secure it. And uh, when you're seeing period dramas, when you see how, um, you know, how rulers ruled the earth, you can see insecurity was one of the primary reasons. Today, insecurity is there. It's still there. So today, maybe become people where we allow God to work in and through us, that our capacity increases for more, for doing more. And we'll be able to live the life that God's called us to live. The third thing is insecurity isolates. It isolates me from the people I uh, have to be around with. It isolates me from the community that I have to be around with. 1 Samuel 20 verse 11 to 15. This uh, passage is taken where Jonathan, in fact, who is the son of uh, uh, Saul, and is a dear friend of David. And one of the beautiful things which I loved about this entire story trail was the father had insecurity, but the son could overcome that insecurity, even though he knew that he wouldn't get the throne. He was secure in his friendship. He was secure in his identity to be the best he could be. And this is what it goes on to say for Samuel, for Samuel 20 verses 11 to 15. Come out to the field with me, Jonathan replied, and they went out there together. Then Jonathan told David, I promise by the Lord, the God of Israel, that by this time tomorrow or next day at the least, I will talk to my father and let you know at once how he feels about you. If he speaks favorably about you, I will let you know. But if he's angry and wants you to be killed, may the Lord strike me and even kill me if I don't warn you so that you can escape and live. May the Lord be with you as he used to be with my father. And may you treat me with fruitful love of the Lord as long as I live. But if I die, treat my family with this beaut with this faithful love, even when the Lord destroys all your enemies from the face of the earth. This is a beautiful um, time when um, Jonathan really wanted David to be within the courtrooms. But David knew that Saul was after his life. And Jonathan makes this commitment to him saying, if uh, my dad is not favorable, you know, you can go ahead. And I completely understand. You're the Lord's anointed. And even if um, I don't make it look after my family. But he says an interesting thing. He says, may the Lord be with you as he used to be with my father. So insecurity that I said, you know, many times it's felt within. It's also seen by others around. And it's closest seen by the people that love us and care for us. They will immediately know whether we are operating out of a place of insecurity. And as his son, he knew that God was not with his father. Because if God is in us, insecurity cannot be there. Because I, as I said earlier, we are all unique. We are all created uniquely. And so in this uniqueness, God's given us actually no reason to compare. But the world has caused us to compare because of position, because of money, because of status, because of the way we've differentiated skin tones the way we've differentiated looks. But today, can we come to a place of not being insecure? Today, when you read the life of Jonathan, he didn't allow insecurity to really dampen his spirit. He moved on. In fact, he was a mighty man. In fact, he and his armor bearer went in 
and they won an entire battle they decided you know what rather than being sitting quietly let's just boldly get into battle he and his armor bearer alone so today when when reading on jonathan if we have people around us or if we have people who are insecure we don't have to immediately become insecure we can be people who are secure and lead them to a place of finding their true purpose but first it comes to a place where we don't isolate ourselves you know many a times we find that it's easy to isolate ourselves and make it all about us because no one is giving us the attention no one is giving us the room to shine no one is understanding our point of view you know today being a team player is tough but but if we can learn the art of knowing how to work with others and not giving room for insecurity i believe the mission of god will be far more accomplished than ever before today the church is more divided the church is more opinionated today the church is unable to move ahead many a times in the mission which god has called us to do because of insecurity today the mission of the church is compromised because the direction in which god leads does not align with the direction because of insecurity being set in and today we cannot be governed like that when we read the new testament we see paul never allowed the establishing of churches become his identity he foremost knew that the church belonged to jesus jesus cares for every church jesus cares for every person who's walking into the church his he understood his role his role was an apostle to go and plant churches and to move to the next yes there are certain people who are uh, called to stay with them nurture them grow with them each one has a calling and the sooner we realize that and sooner that re- we realize the mission that we are called to be part of we will be able to accomplish great things for god so today probably you are in a place where you know you've isolated yourselves from others you know you isolated yourselves from doing what god's called you to do because insecurity has taken a big part of your heart or today probably you've you know you feel uh you know what i was serving in church one it's upon a time but now i just feel you know in sick i don't feel i'll be of any value honestly i strongly feel you know uh serving in church goes beyond our skill set serving in church goes beyond our age you can serve in any age at any season that god has you in it's for us to see are we able to see the mission that god has for us when god created us when he's the potter when he molds us and shapes us there's a divine purpose that we have to be uh doing here on this earth you know um uh, both me and my wife uh, started this media company called big g media and um uh, 2015 2016 when we started it is when our heart's desire was to actually go into churches and teach media and do like workshops and equip them and help them move from a to b and help them be digitally engaging and doing all that and um, you know over the years as time went um, that didn't materialize you know and thing other things came we whatever came we did and um 2019 when we actually had started zion and when we were uh, a little over a year into this journey uh, god brought in uh, a dear friend who runs this uh, thing called outcast and uh, um he started helping us with our design and things like that and a year later after that he said uh, ananaka i want to get on a call with you and he got on a call and he explained to us all about uh, outcast academy and uh, what he wants to do by raising up media missionaries and uh, you know what um as we were talking with him we realized you know what the desire that god placed in our heart is being accomplished by another person and we told him ricky we are with you no matter what we are we are with you we will come help you uh, in whatever capacity we can and um just a week back we me and tina were there and uh, in one of the question answer sessions 
um, they had asked and I, I talked about this and I said, you know what, um, sometimes the plan of God may not have to necessarily happen with us, but it will involve us. Are we willing to be knit into that story? You know, and it may not be in the forefront, in the center or where the focus or the spotlight is, but in the thread, are we willing to really be, are we willing to knit somewhere in that story? And I believe each and every one of us are called into the mission of the church. When I say church here, it's not, you know, the local church. It's the church that Jesus Christ is building for one which he's going to come for, which you and I will all be part of. And that glorious day we'll get to be singing and worshipping him all the days of our life into eternity. Because I strongly believe insecurity causes us to thrive in isolation. Whereas when we move away and don't give room to insecurity, we will soon realize that we'll be able to do far more greater things what God has set out and called us to do. So today I want to ask you, what is it that God's called you to do? God's called you distinctively to do something. Are you allowing insecurity to isolate you? I know of many friends who've, who've thought that they could only serve for a season in church because they always felt the next best person will always come. So let's not allow insecurity to isolate us because the minute we get isolated, we are isolating also from the community of believers, the people who could pray with us, stand with us, encourage us and fulfill, especially help us in fulfilling the mission of the church and God's plan for us today. So today, even as we come to a close, I just want us to understand the magnitude of this because we cannot allow this to be our foundation. Because insecurity starts with a small thought. And after we allow insecurity to start with a small thought, fear sets in. Fear of what will happen if I lose control. And then without us knowing we are anxious about it, we start worrying about it, we start dwelling about it. We think, we see what are the probable outcomes that can come and we we try controlling over this and before we know it we have a disgust and a distaste over that person because they are making me feel insecure and suddenly there's a profound amount of sadness and grief in our hearts we are like you know what i think this is what this is my lot in life this is what i'm supposed to be dealing with and we uh, we start you know isolating ourselves we start disengaging ourselves and before we know it, we end up with anger, where we will start spewing anger. And, you know, anyone who touches us, we're just overflowing and bubbling with anger. If there's one person who can help us deal with this emotion gracefully and help us remove it entirely is the Holy Spirit. And so today I want the Holy Spirit to work in and through us. In and through us so that we will be people who will be able to be overcomers, that we won't be overcome by these feelings. You know, in another context, in 1 John 4, 4, he in fact is talking about the false uh, teachers who are coming in. But this verse stood out because of the Spirit of God. It says, but you belong to God, my dear children. You already have won a victory for those over those people because the Spirit who lives in you is greater than the Spirit who lives in this world. Many a times we... Do not understand the Spirit of God who is living in us. He is greater than anyone else that's there in this world. So let him take every room in our heart and work at it. Because if we can deal with insecurity, I believe we can live out the plan of God to the fullest that he's called us to live. You and I are created uniquely. There's no room for comparison. And when we allow a secure God to work in and through us, we will be about his mission. About his mission. We, we won't tear down, but we will build. We won't, uh, you know, disengage, but we will make sure we are engaging. We won't, you know, um, shape people in things that are of this world, but we will start bearing fruits of the Spirit and build people around that. So I would encourage you, church, today. And even as I've spoken, I believe this is not a one-day thing or it's not a one-off Sunday where we ask God to be dealing, but it's an everyday thing. Every day when you wake up, 
ask God, God, I want to be an overcomer in this area. Allow me, enable me to see you more clearly than ever before. So can we close today? And I believe that God wants us to change. And if you're struggling, as I pray, would you commit yourself to God, that God will work in and through us so that we'll be able to deal with our insecurities and allow the Holy Spirit to shape us. A loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you, Lord, for your word, which says that you are the potter, we are the clay. And right now, Lord Jesus, as you are shaping us, Lord, we admit to having insecurity in our lives. And I pray that, Lord, we've Lord, been scarred by insecurity in many seasons and many, uh, many stages of our life. Would you shape that, Lord Jesus, for us? Help us to be overcomers in that, Lord. Lord, we pray that, Lord, we wouldn't, Lord, be people who are shrinking the plan that you have for us because of our insecurities, Lord. Help us to rise above. Help us to see you more clearly, Lord Jesus. Help us to be people who will be able to make room, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. I pray that, Lord, we won't isolate ourselves, Lord. I pray that, Lord, we'll be people who will be able to realize that in as you've called many into your saving knowledge, that we'll be able to only propel the mission of the church, the mission of the gospel forward. And we ask that we'll be able to do that, Lord Jesus. We thank you. Be with us, Lord. Strengthen us, Lord. I pray specifically, Lord Jesus, for each and every one, Lord, that, Lord, these feelings that we've been dealing with over the last six weeks, as hard as they are, Lord, I pray that, Lord, there'll be something we'll be intentional about, that you would work in and through us, Lord. Strengthen us. Help us, Lord. I pray that, Lord, you will go before us. I pray especially for those of us who are starting this, who are traveling, that your journey mercies will go. Bless the food and water of our homes. I pray for health and protection over each and every one, Lord Jesus. We raise our hands and we say that, and we commit ourselves to you, that you will be glorified, you will be honored. Be with us, Lord. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. So church, as we have finished the series, it just doesn't stop here. I believe God's word wants to change us. God's word wants to, you know, shape us to be the better person that he has created us to be. So would you allow him to shape you? May we not be governed by these feelings, but may we be overcome us so that we'll be able to do what God's called us to do. Do it exponentially so that the future generations who come will be able to hear him and live in the security that his word promises. May we never build foundations of insecurity and may God work in and through us. Some of these might take long durations of time, but allow the Holy Spirit to work because he has overcome the world. I pray that you have a blessed week. God bless you all. Thanks for listening to this message. We hope you were blessed. To hear more messages like this, make sure to subscribe and check out our podcast channel for past episodes. If you like what you are hearing, consider rating us, subscribing, and even sharing it with friends. That would really help us. For more content from We Are Zion and to connect with us, go to wearezion.in. Remember, whoever finds Jesus finds life.